Television Marketing Nonsensical Terminology, or TMNT for short, is an acronym that we made up here at Linus Media Group to describe all of the overtop terms TV manufacturers use to describe their products' refresh rates. These are usually simple to spot as they mostly consist of an adjective slapped onto the word motion, such as true motion, aqua motion, or clear motion. But do these proprietary rating systems actually deliver the image quality that we want? For any who might be unfamiliar with what exactly a screen's refresh rate is, you can watch our video explaining it in depth right up here. But basically, it's the amount of times a screen can update the still images that it strings together to create motion in a single second, with the standard refresh rate being 60 hertz, meaning 60 images or 60 cycles. Since most video sources don't exceed that limit, demand for faster refresh rates has mostly remained among higher grade enthusiasts and professionals. But recently, consumers have been looking for ways to reduce image degrading effects, such as the motion blur seen in high speed moving images, which often is a result from a display's inability to refresh quickly enough. So how do these high refresh rate technologies with the funny names try to solve this problem? Not surprisingly, they employ different forms of visual trickery, as you can't exactly extract 120 frames per second out of something that was only recorded at 60 or even 30 hertz. Instead, these TVs will fool your eyes into thinking that the refresh rate is higher in some way. One common technique is called backlight strobing, which works by doing something slightly differently from a normal LCD monitor. Modern flat panel displays show motion by doing something called sample and hold, which means it will display a static image on screen for a full 1 60th of a second, or however long its refresh rate is, before loading the next one. Backlight strobing works by only turning on the display's backlight for a fraction of a display cycle, and instead just show a black screen for some portion of that cycle. This creates the illusion of more frames, and therefore smoother motion. Another tactic is called black frame insertion, which works uh, much the same way, except instead of turning off the backlight, the display just shows a black frame. Other TVs instead use motion interpolation, which involves a processor inside the display generating intermediate frames that are inserted between actual frames from the video's source. Because these generated frames are what the eye might expect to see, such as a moving car halfway between point A and B, this also makes everything appear smoother. But how well does this actually work? If you've ever been in front of a TV that can do this stuff, it's pretty obvious that things do, in fact, generally look smoother and more flowy than on a more run-of-the-mill set. Whether this is actually a good thing, however, will greatly depend on who you ask. The words hyper-real and soap opera-like have been used to describe this effect, as while things do look clearer and smoother, many people perceive a definite fakeness to the resulting motion, either because the technology isn't perfect or because some people are just used to lower frame rates, making things look theatrical. After all, many movies are filmed and shown at 24 FPS. And of course, it's important to remember that many TVs that advertise refresh rates of 240 hertz, 480 hertz, or even higher, often can't actually show nearly that many frames per second. Rather, those are numbers that roughly indicate what the manufacturer claims the TV can simulate. So I wouldn't recommend trying to build a 4 GPU rig and hook it up to a so-called 480 hertz television just so you can play TF2 at obscene frame rates and make sure that you see every single head movement frame in Counter-Strike. Uh, it's not gonna work, but you could try and watch me gesticulate in more buttery smooth detail than ever before. You should use Squarespace's 24-7 support and live chat or email, whatever, if you have any troubles with your $8 a month website that you got a free domain with because you bought it for a year. You should use things like their responsive design so that your website scales and looks great on any device. And if you're looking for a job, you should probably use their cover page module because it looks great. If you're trying to sell something, you should probably use their commerce module. They have modules for tons of different things that you could potentially want to use. And if you're wondering and you're not entirely sure if you want to yet, you should start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, you should make sure to use offer code Linus because you should get 10% off. Squarespace, you should.
All right, guys, I hope you liked the video. If you liked it, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. That's cool, too. If you guys want us to cover other stuff, comment down below. That would be awesome. Check out Channel Super Fun. We recently did this cool thing with, like, the bubble things, and you run around and hit each other and play soccer at the same time. I don't know. It, it was fun. I got to hit people. Whenever I get to hit people, I think it's fun, to be completely honest. Does that make me a bad person? I don't know. Also, uh, you know, TechWiki. Subscribe. It'd be cool. See ya.